Hey, what's happening? That's your boy Rico from Street Schools. I know it's late. It's 6 a.m. And I mean, I like took a small nap, but I haven't been to sleep sleep yet. But I know that there's a large portion of y'all that are actually up around this time. Either you're already waking up or you're still up, staying up late like me. Um, so I always try to put videos out around this time as well. May not be every day, but I try to make sure I cater to the late crowd sometimes as well. But we're here to talk about whether the commander should pursue both Dolphins cap cuts Xavier Howard the cornerback and Emmanuel Ogba the edge rusher should we should we not why and why not for both I mean because honestly what's the point of the commanders having the most cap space in the NFL if we're not going to use it our cornerback and edge rusher arguably two of the commanders biggest needs as well heading into this 2024 regular season should the Washington Commanders make splash signings at these positions or should they just go the cheap veteran route, go the draft route when it comes to edge rusher corner and things like that? And are Xavier Howard and Emmanuel Ogba great fits for what Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. are trying to do with their scheme? We're going to dive into all of that and more. But before we do, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned because, again, so many videos video ideas and I keep talking about all of these fun video ideas that I have this isn't even one of them I mean I just saw Xavier Howard and Emmanuel Ogbaugh got released and then I had to go do my own research I had to look up a little bit of tape and be like hey man should we go get these guys because we do need corner and we need edge rusher clearly so I was like hey man let's go ahead and move everything further back let's talk about this while the iron is hot while we still cooking and let's go ahead and get this one out the way and then we're going to get some more of the other ideas that i already have cooking up as well so make sure you stay tuned for those videos that i'm talking about they're coming out real soon like i've been saying i'm trying to come out with a minimum two videos a day but i'm trying to get to the point where i'm doing like three a day as well but i'm just super busy so make sure you stay tuned stay patient with me let's go and get to this video right now let's get it All right, so it's surprise cut season. I just did a video again. I'm so busy. I've been doing so many videos. I don't know if it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, or whatever, but I literally did a video talking about a lot of the cap cuts that could happen around the NFL. Pro Football Focus helped me with a great article giving one for each team, but we also talked about the fact that there are a lot of other people that may potentially get cut so that teams can save some cap space. Yeah, I just did that video yesterday afternoon talking about how the cap space went up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that a lot of teams still won't make cap casualty cuts where they're literally just cutting a guy just simply because they need the money. Some teams are in the negatives. They literally have to cut guys that they literally don't even want to cut just so they can actually get neutral. And I mean, you got to remember, we still got to pay our rookie class as well. So you need to have some money set aside. You need to be above the cap in the positives, at least to a certain extent, just for the rookie class alone that you're going to bring in. And again, a lot of teams are in the negative. So you're going to see a lot of cuts around the NFL. And again, I already did a video talking about that believe that was yesterday day before yesterday whatever it was i literally talked about some cuts that could potentially because we already have a lot of free agents that we already know available you look everywhere you can see like a top 100 list of available free agents come when free agency starts as of march 11th the legal tampering period and then the actual new league year starts march 13th so that's when we can actually put pen to paper and we get contract details and things like that we already know like a lot of the top free agents that are available just simply because their contracts end going into the 2024 season. 2023 were the last years of a lot of those guys' contracts. But then you also have guys whose contracts do not end before this 2024 season. Some of them go through 2024. Some of them probably even go through 2025 and beyond. But they're probably going to end up being available in free agency because the current team that they're on is going to have to cut them to save space. Or some of them just probably want to like maybe this guy they just feel like they're to the point where yeah we'll eat that little bit of dick cap because this guy just isn't worth taking up this space this roster spot 
starting over a guy that we could potentially come go and get in the draft to start over him or you know we could save some money there and we just also just simply don't like him why not save the money just like in our situation like a charles leno or a logan thomas because we're super in the plus in cap space we have the most cap space in the nfl any guys that we cut that we don't necessarily have to cut that aren't unrestricted free agents like a charles leno or logan thomas it's just simply because i mean yeah the cap savings are good and all that's an additional benefit but we're if we cut Charles Leno and Logan Thomas, this is just because this regime just simply doesn't really like them. The cap savings isn't just that dramatic to the point that cutting them is like, man, we need that money type of thing. Now, if you want that money because you plan on being very aggressive in free agency and getting a lot of the top guys at different positions, then yeah, it's more of a need to cut Charles Leno and Logan Thomas. But if we're not doing that and we still end up cutting those guys, there's my point is that there are a lot of teams that are probably cutting players, not only just as cap casualties, but some some guys i mean it may be like a one man's trash another man's treasure the team that they're currently on feels like this guy's not good he doesn't fit what we're doing maybe they had a head coaching change an offensive coordinator defensive coordinator change they don't fit what we're doing we might as well cut him let him go somewhere else where he can shine a little bit more let somebody else pay him and one man's trash another man's trash. there's just so many different reasons as to why players are potentially going to get cut and we're going to have more guys available in free agency than we previously even thought including an xavian howard and emmanuel ogba who we're talking about today now, JP Finley brought up a great point that this is basically surprise cut season. But at the same time, when it comes to Xavier Howard and Emmanuel Ogba, maybe this isn't that much of a surprise. Maybe a lot of people didn't necessarily see it coming. I know I didn't, but it's more so just because of the lack of detailed research like if i really just looked at the miami dolphins roster top to bottom and was looking at them like oh they may cut these guys because of these reasons i don't think i would have been as surprised with the xavier Howard and emmanuel agba cuts because we're gonna dive into it throughout this video but these aren't necessarily surprised when you're looking at the situations and how how they performed last year compared to how much money they were owed going into 2024 these cuts aren't as surprising as they seem. But let's start with Xavier Howard. The Dolphins have informed cornerback Xavier Howard. He will be released at the start of the league year, which again is a March 13th situation. The four-time Pro Bowl selection is expected to have significant interest on the market. And I want to emphasize that. He's expected to have a very significant free agency market, which to me, as a guy that, you know, we're exploring whether or not we should sign him or... It, that sounds like there's going to be a lot of competition out there and more competition means bigger market means teams outbidding each other and the price going higher and higher and higher xavier howard goes to team a and team a says we're willing to give you this much per year then team b comes in and outbids them and says i'm giving willing to give you this much per year then he goes back to team a and is like hey well team b said they'll give me this you're gonna have to get higher than that for me to sign with you and then imagine if you do that scenario with more than two teams and i'm really afraid that xavier howard situation could end up like that and him potentially being overpaid just simply because of the market that's out there for him the reason that you probably could argue that this is a surprise cut is because Xavier Howard still had three years left on his five-year deal he signed a 90 million dollar deal back in 2022 just two years ago he still had three years left but this move will provide the Dolphins $18.5 million in salary cap space, but they can't use it until after June 1st because they're basically designating him as a June 1st cut, which is really interesting. The fact that even though he's not technically getting cut from the Dolphins, so after June 1st, so they can save as much money as possible and they won't be able to use that cap space savings until then. I mean, they just want him gone so bad that even though they won't be able to use that when come free agency, March and all of that, they have to wait until after June, well after the draft, like a month and a half month and a few days after the draft to be able to use it um but it's interesting that he can still technically currently be on the Dolphins team but still sign with another team be with them in early mini camps and things like that that's really interesting like he's still contractually going to be on the Dolphins but already signed with a new team and already doing early offseason workouts with that team it's a really interesting situation I I'm going on a tangent but I just thought that was really weird but that, I mean, that's really beneficial to the player that because the Dolphins and the reason that they're waiting to cut them until after June 1st is so that they can save as much money as possible, which is a completely selfish reason on their end. It would be terrible for a player to be punished and not be able to actually leave the Dolphins and go sign with another team until then. That would really suck, man. But just going back through the history of it, the Dolphins drafted Xavier Howard, who's now 30 years old. Let's let's not forget that. 
in the second round of the 2016 NFL Draft out of Baylor, and he's since emerged as one of the league's most productive cornerbacks. But even when he was at his best, a lot of people talked about that, you know, he's an interception machine, but how great is he actually in coverage? Yeah, I mean, he, I think he's a great corner, but a lot of people question that maybe his production actually doesn't match his skill. You know, maybe he's overproducing compared to how good he actually is type of situation. He has 29 career interceptions, which is the second most in the NFL since he entered the league in 2016. And that's very notable. He's a four-time Pro Bowler, and Howard was named to the All-Pro second team in 2018 and to the first team in 2020. That's not very long ago. He was still a team captain this past year, but he didn't make the Pro Bowl or the all pro at all this past year and he only recorded one interception in the 13 games that he played in in the regular season but he did have an interception in the afc wildcard loss against the chiefs in the playoffs but still a very down year for him i mean pro football focus gave him a 55.1 overall grade for the season which ranked 99th out of cornerbacks and then he also allowed an 81.3 passer rating when targeted in coverage, according to Pro Football Reference, which is not good at all, man. That's not good at all. So he looks to basically be coming off of a down year, but will still probably demand a big time contract just purely off of the fact that so many teams are going to be interested in him. And I'm quite sure that even though if we're going off of a, like a what have you done for me lately type of thing, basing it off of what he did in the 2023 season, He's not the best cornerback available in free agency at all, but I'm pretty sure he has the most interceptions out of any free agent corner available. So throughout his career compared to anybody else's career. And so I'm pretty sure the agent in negotiations is going to constantly bring that up. Yeah, I know he was bad last year, but look at the career interceptions. He's only 30 years old. Look at the career interceptions. Yeah, I know he had an off year, but look at them career interceptions. I mean, they're just going to constantly bring that up and demand a certain amount of money minimum just simply because of how productive he's been throughout his career. And yet 30 is getting up there in age, but that's not too old for a corner to bounce back. And then on the commander's end, talking about us, it doesn't really make much sense for us. I mean, yeah, we have the most cap space in the NFL. So you think logically we have the best chance to sign him to a deal if we want to, if we're interested. And we could if we are interested, but that's the problem. I don't think we'll be interested. I don't think Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, John Wood Jr., and Jason Simmons will be very interested in bringing in an Xavier and Howard. First of all, Joe Wood Jr. already said in his press conference, his initial press conference last week, that he killed or a couple of weeks ago. Again, I've lost track of time because I'm just video, 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 just super busy. Um, but he already said in that press conference that he really likes the talent in the secondary, especially Quan Martin. And that they really want to have a chance to see how the Commanders DBs look under their coaching. Basically blaming Rivera, Jack DeRio, and Visselmeyer for Forbes and St. Juice having disappointing seasons. And Quan Martin taking so long to finally show flashes until like the end of the year. This new regime basically feels like these guys already currently on the Commanders roster in this secondary have some pretty good talent to them and just need to be retaught in a different way and develop the right way and put into the right scheme and situations to succeed far more often than they were last year. And I can't blame them for thinking like that, man. Emmanuel Forbes, say what you want about him, but there's a reason he went in the first round and Deron Bland went in the fifth round in the same draft last year. But who had the far better season? Deron Bland by a mile. But who had Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. coaching him up and putting them in the right situations, the right scheme and all that type of stuff? Deron Bland did as well. So maybe there's a direct correlation there. This coaching staff feels like basically they can get the most out of the players that are already here for the commanders. And don't forget that the Cowboys were reportedly planning on drafting Emmanuel Forbes if we didn't take him first. So they apparently have a plan for him dating all the way back to this time last year. I mean, they were looking at him in the draft like, man, if we can get him, we could put him in these situations, develop him the right way to get him to succeed. And I'm assuming that that plan carries over to the fact that now they actually have him, even though they didn't draft him, they just went to the team that he was already on. And I want to reiterate from several things that I've heard and read around the internet, this new staff loves Quan Martin. And even Craig Hoffman and Logan Paulson said on their podcast that they feel like Quan Martin is going to end up basically being a better Cameron Curl. So this staff is very high on some of the players that are already here. They love Emmanuel 
Forbes in the draft, and they feel like Quan Martin is destined for greatness um, from based on, I, I'm assuming, what they saw towards the end of last year. So they're just unlikely to jump the gun and spend big money on a corner in free agency before they even have a chance to even watch these guys practice or play for the first time ever. I mean, at least get these guys into like early offseason workouts and then be like, OK, yeah, maybe we do need a little bit more talent here. But I don't think these guys are going to jump the gun on corner. Other positions, maybe, but corner, not so sure. Like, of course, getting a top free agency corner sounds fun. But we've already seen as Commanders fans, we know, if anybody knows, we know that getting a top corner in free agency doesn't always work out. And fit is a major part of that. And speaking of fit, most people feel like an Xavier Howard is far best suited in zone coverage. And when I'm looking at what he did for the Dolphins, especially last year, or even going back to his best year, it just seemed like he did his best work in zone coverage. Just with the way he's built, his play style, his athleticism, he's just literally built better for zone coverage than man coverage. And so ironically, Xavier and Howard actually would have been a better fit here last year with Rivera and Jack DeRio more than here now under Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. with their aggressive man coverage scheme that prefers the guys like the Marcus Peters, like the risk takers, like Trevon Diggs and Deron Bland, obviously, but even like an Emmanuel Forbes based on what he did and what he was known for in college. It's actually really interesting to think about how Forbes, the interception king in college, is about to get coached up by the takeaway kings in the NFL fell over the past three years in Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. I'm very excited about that just to see where that's about to head to. And would you prefer to bring back and re-sign Kendall Fuller for potentially $14 million a year according to his market value by Spot Track? Or an Xavier Howard, who's arguably worse than Kendall Fuller last year and is also coming off of arguably his worst season of his career last year and is potentially going to cost more than $4 million per year minimum than Kendall Fuller. Because I'm expecting him to potentially get like $18 million per year plus, probably even potentially more than that. We'll see again just because of the big market. But again, just based off of how I don't want to just say bad. I don't want to downplay him like that, but how not good he was last year and how how much of a step back that he took last year maybe he doesn't get that big money but again it's already being reported from multiple sources that there's going to be a lot of interest in him from several teams so he'll probably be able to demand that money even though he doesn't necessarily deserve it so again Kendall Fuller even if you just want to compare him to Kendall Fuller resign Kendall Fuller for potentially 14 million a year or go out and get Xavier Howard for 18 million a year minimum and again, Kendall Fuller, if you're looking at the stats or even if you just want to use pro football focus grades, he was the better corner last year. Point blank period. He even had more interceptions. Again, Xavier Howard only had one interception in the regular season. Kendall Fuller had two. So he doubled his production technically. And even draft wise, even let's just move on from Kendall Fuller. That mid first to like through the fourth, fifth round of this upcoming draft is a great sweet spot for defensive backs. I'm telling you. So with us having six picks out of the top 102 picks, why not just take one there? And instead of having to pay that drafted, younger, his best days are ahead of him, corner that you just drafted, $18 million per year like you would Xavier Howard, you can get him for potentially less than $2 million a year depending on what round you take him. So would you prefer a young explosive high ceiling rookie that could potentially be developed by this coaching staff for potentially less than two million dollars a year or xavier howard coming off of arguably the worst season of his career for 18 million dollars a year i mean i know proven veteran i get it but hey man that money just may not be worth it man and with the previous regime with their inability to scout and draft the right guys in the first place and then also their inability to develop those guys and put them in the best situations to succeed even after they drafted them that would have had me a little bit more apprehensive on my decision to say no against Xavier Howard like this definitely would have been a slightly more difficult decision because with the previous regime, we were so bad at developing talent that it almost felt like we had to get proven guys out of free agency to come in and improve our team. Now we have one of the best drafters in the NFL and Adam Peters, especially late round wise, and arguably the best group of DB developers in our coach and staff right now. So it's obvious to choose that second or third rounder over like an Xavier Howard, just simply because now as fans can have confidence that this potentially drafted corner will actually end up being good finally 
compared to the previous regime where you draft a corner who knows what's going to happen with them i mean the draft is always a crap shoot but i like our odds way more with this coaching staff than the previous one and the only reason i would have even thought about potentially wanting to sign xavian howard to this big money he's potentially going to get is just simply because i had no trust in that previous regime to draft the right guy and to develop him and it's like well xavian howard at the very least at some point in his career has had proven talent now with the development staff that we have all across the board offense and defense and with the elite nfl minds that we have building this team together i'm gonna side with draft more times than not even with the most cap space the nfl draft sounds like a very attractive option especially if you want to save money and build for the future but then again granted we have some position groups where you can't just wait till the draft most notably edge rusher we got to attack both of that but we'll get there when we get to emmanuel ogba but I think we will end up making at least a couple of veteran corner signings in free agency, but I just don't believe any of them will be like big splash signings like an Xavier Howard or I mean, maybe like a Stephon Gilmore, depending on what he's asking for. But that does not mean I don't think that we'll have a good chance of making any splash signings in free agency at all. I just think it will probably be at other positions, just not corner. But speaking of cheaper veteran options at corner. The 49ers released veteran cornerback Isaiah Oliver, clearing a little over $2 million in cap space. Oliver appeared in all 17 regular season games, but his role diminished as the season progressed, and he didn't play any snaps in the postseason. That's really interesting. So that means you could probably get him for cheap because his value was literally diminished over time that pre this past season with the 49ers um so it's not like he can go to free agency and be like man y'all need to pay me because people are gonna look right back at him like what did you do for the 49ers last year type of thing so you could probably get him for very cheap and then also he has a strong connection to the commanders he was drafted by dan quinn's atlanta falcons and signed by adam peters's 49ers last year so he has ties to dan quinn and adam peters and i can see this guy being like a cheap veteran option just to make sure we have some bodies in the room a guy that they could trust dan quinn saw something in him coming out of the draft and 40 and adam peters saw something in him last year in free agency so it just makes too much sense that i mean I, i'm almost willing to put a little bit of money on the fact that we'll probably end up signing isaiah oliver in free agency it just makes too much sense and then also now moving on edge rusher edge rusher is different dog cornerback yeah i can see the argument like yeah joe with jr dan quinn let's see what they can do with the guys we already have here and let's add some talent especially through the draft but maybe we don't need to get too hasty in free agency edge rusher completely different we're in dire need of edge rusher talent right now on roster unless we re-sign a couple of guys right now on roster all we have is fifth round rookie from last year kj henry and seventh round rookie from last year andre jones who barely played last year kj henry showed flashes but i'm not ready to trust that he and and Andre Jones can start for us right in and left in on this defense. I we need edge rusher very bad. We literally just need bodies, not even just necessarily elite edge rushers. We literally just don't have edge rushers. Period. We literally only have two on contract. I don't think y'all understand how crazy that is right now. So I'm sitting here looking at all edge rushers available. Like sign them all. Give me anybody that's an edge rusher in this upcoming free agency. And so the Miami Dolphins, after announcing that they were playing planning on releasing Xavier Howard they're also releasing linebacker defensive end edge rusher whatever you want to call him Emmanuel Ogba and that will save them 13.7 million dollars in cap space I don't know what they plan on doing after the draft once all of that saved cap space finally hits their bank account it's gonna be a little delayed they gotta wait till after June 1st but whatever they do man they boy, they ready they got some money they got some money unstacked maybe that's just will extend to a tag of a low on a big time long-term contract after june 1st once that money finally hits our account who knows we'll see and of course in my opinion brian burns josh allen and maybe even a bryce huff from the jets are arguably better and more exciting options in free agency but those guys may all just end up getting franchise tagged and but we know Emmanuel Ogba is available. He just got released. We don't have to worry about him getting franchise tagged. The Dolphins just cut him and he still had years left on his contract. Now, how much could he potentially cost us? That's a very important question. 
Well, when you're looking at his previous contract with the Dolphins, they had him making $16.35 million per year. And the money he was supposed to get this upcoming 2024 season from the Dolphins before they released him was somewhere around $18 million, which is around $6 million less than what people expect Josh Allen or Brian Burns to get per year on the open market which honestly is a little bit closer than I expected money-wise. Like when I was looking at Emmanuel Ogba, before I went to go look at his contract situation and how much money he could potentially get on the open market, just looking at what he was getting paid from the Dolphins previously before he got cut, I was expecting it to be a way bigger gap between him and Brian Burns and Josh Allen, man. I didn't expect it to be that close. I mean, if it's only a $6 million per year difference, you do whatever it takes to get Brian Burns and Josh Allen because they're definitely a bigger, there's a way bigger gap in production and talent than that $6 million would have you believe. I, I mean, I... He's nowhere near as cheap as I thought he could potentially be. I thought he was going to be way cheaper than Josh Allen and Brian Burns. And now I'm really afraid because he's probably going to expect something similar to what he was making per year with the Dolphins. And he may even likely want more than that now that he's a free agent on an open market and wants his next contract. I could definitely see a scenario where he ends up signing like a not cheap but like a decent one-year prove-it deal with whatever team that ends up signing them especially based off of what he did last year which takes me to my next point with him not being as cheap as i hoped you would think he was probably coming off of a big season last year with the money that he's potentially going to get out here but nope he only had six sacks and pro football focus graded him very low and they felt like he was coming off of his worst seasons of his career as well just like xavier howard you see the theme both Xavier Howard and Emmanuel Ogba are coming off of arguably their worst seasons in their careers and were cut to save the Dolphins a lot of money. There's a reason that the Dolphins cut them, which goes back to my point very early in the video when I was saying that these cuts aren't necessarily as surprising as you thought because Xavier Howard, we've already broken him down. Emmanuel Ogba, man, last year, Pro Football Focus gave him an overall grade of 55.4, not good. Run defense grade of 41.4, bad. 29.1 tackling grade. Oh, that's unacceptable for Joe Wood Jr. and Dan Quinn. That alone it would, makes him just impossible for us to potentially sign. Because those guys have already said that it's a mentality thing. Yeah, talent matters a lot, and what you are physically matters a lot, but they feel like emotionally and mentally their play style they're going to come with you need to be an excellent player you need to be ready to do whatever it takes for the team you need to hit hard you need to tackle and for tackling to be a 29.1 arguably his worst trait means he's literally unplayable in the scheme and the mentality and the tone that they want to set the culture that they the identity that they want to have on defense and then pass rush grade i mean a 63.6 that's not bad but that's not great either so it just it doesn't make much sense for us so this is probably a no as well in my opinion i think it's highly unlikely that we pursue an emmanuel Ogba, which is crazy because we need edge rushers in the worst way dog but all the money that is spent is not necessarily good money that's spent if we were to go and get a guy like this i know we need edge rusher really bad but we should not overreact and overpay for somebody just simply to fill in a spot. Just to say, hey, we signed a top edge rusher in free agency. That's more like putting a band-aid over a problem rather than actually going in and fixing it. But to look at our edge rusher situation right now, again, we have KJ Henry and Andre Jones. And technically Joshua Pryor and Jalen Harris, but they barely played if they ever played at all last year. So that doesn't count. Curtis Brooks. I think he's some type of restricted free agent that maybe we can bring him back. But this is not a guy that really matters at all. And then he's technically more so like an interior defensive lineman anyway. So he doesn't even really count. Then you have unrestricted free agents and Jay Smith-Williams, Casey Tuhill, F.L. Bada, and Abdullah Anderson that maybe they want to resign. But as of right now, the only edge rushers currently under contract for the commanders are KJ Henry, Jalen Harris, Andre Jones, and Joshua Pryor. That's not good at all. That sounds like winless season right there, how bad that is. But even with that huge need for edge rusher, I'm still cool on Emmanuel Ogba. No thanks. I would prefer a Bryce Huff if he ends up being available because I feel like he's more likely to not get tagged compared to like a 
Josh Allen or Brian Burns, I feel like he is more likely to hit free agency than those other two guys that I just named. I would also prefer maybe like a Jonathan Grenard from the Texans. I feel like he has a lot of potential to him. And I can see Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. like, man, can we please get that guy? And he could be like a cornerstone edge rusher piece. He was very underrated for the Texans last year. Very. Speaking of underrated, Dorrance Armstrong Jr. from the Dallas Cowboys. I think he would be a really good cheap option. He's already acclimated to Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr.'s defense and how they want to run things. Again, when you're talking mentality and how they want to do things, the tone they want to set, the identity they want to have on defense, this guy already has that. He would come, if we were to sign him in free agency, he would be the most familiar with Joe Witt Jr., Dan Quinn, and what they want to do on defense, and even Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. He would be helping them out on certain aspects of learning the defense and things like that. And then also on top of all of that, he's really started to flash the past couple of years. I don't know, a lot of y'all may be sleep on him, but he's somebody that is definitely worth monitoring in free agency, man, because under their coaching, his trajectory seems to be pointing up right now, man. It looks like he has his best days ahead of him, his best games, his best years ahead of him, which I cannot confidently say about Emmanuel Ogba at all right now. But Dorrance Armstrong Jr. had 16 sacks, 28 quarterback hits, and 33 pressures over the last two seasons, which is literally better than what Emmanuel Ogba did for the Dolphins the past two seasons. But he's probably going to also come in as in Dorrance Armstrong Jr. at a way cheaper price than Emmanuel Ogba. And he was doing all of that as a rotational player. He may be ready to get more snaps per game and produce at an even higher level once they give him more snaps. So don't sleep on Dorrance Armstrong at all, man. He was originally known as a pass run specialist, but he's gotten better and better against the run and setting the edge and things like that over the past couple of seasons as well, which is why his play time has started to increase. So I do, in fact, expect him to start to get even more play time coming here. And you never know, maybe he is our starting edge rusher one of those edge rushing spots the left side or the right side well then again dan quinn and joe Wood jr have shown with their defense in dallas that they'll move guys around they won't necessarily just be constrained to being one position like 90 percent of the time in a the season they'll move back and forth so i don't want to necessarily say he's a right in or defensive or left in but either way i think he has a chance to potentially become a starter with his trajectory just based on if you're watching his development and his progress over the past couple of seasons i think his best days are ahead of him and with how he's been coming way more consistent and way more reliable against the run i'm telling you man this guy he's one of the ones maybe a big sleeper pick but ultimately back to emmanuel ogba i'm just gonna have to say no basically for both free agents including xavier howard too as well mostly just because of how much money they may demand compared to how good they will actually end up being i think they both of those guys will end up being overpaid for what they'll actually provide to the teams that they end up signing for and i think we may just want to dodge those bullets man yeah those are some really famous names everybody knows emmanuel ogba xavier howard they're fairly big household names out there but again not all money is good money spent, man. And I, I'm I'm good on these. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button. Stiff arm the subscription button. Stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned to all of the content, man. I really appreciate y'all. And let me know, of course, in the comment section if you agree or disagree with any of my points. Do you want to potentially sign Xavier Howard or Emmanuel Ogba and let me know like what would be your price like if Emmanuel Ogba or Xavier Howard were willing to accept what number like a certain number what would that number be if you were willing to sign those guys or are you just plain no no I'm good on aging Xavier Howard and sort of aging Emmanuel Ogba just plain and simple period no matter how much money they're willing to take let me know how you feel about this whole situation what would you do as far as those two do you feel like they're good fits for the scheme that potentially going on and we should just go ahead and pay them anyway no matter how much money they're asking for would you prefer to go through the draft like I said with as rich this cornerback class is especially when it comes to depth you could just probably get a guy there are you also in the mindset of like a joe witt jr where you feel like hey man let these guys get a hold of emmanuel forbes Quan martin benjamin st juice and all of those guys before we jump the gun and make any big signings in the db group as least at least because we need edge rusher regardless it doesn't there's no coaching in the world that's gonna get what we currently have in the edge rusher group to be what we need them to be during the regular season for us to win games but corner i could see an argument for i mean emmanuel forbes 
Thomas may finally look like a first round pick like immediately like this under the coaching of not only Dan Quinn and Joe with Jr., but also Jason Simmons, our defensive passing game coordinator is coming over for the Ravens Raiders. So let me know how you feel about all of that. Really appreciate y'all. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.